Hey gang, it's Brett here with my assistant Annabelle. And in my last video, we looked at my flood and drain system where we had some imminent overcrowding with the tomatoes. So the plan was to move those out into their own deep water culture system. And that's what we're doing today. So let's get right to it. So here's a shot of the finished product. We've got a simple PVC frame with four five gallon buckets inside and all the standard trimmings of a deep water culture system. We are gonna get a little ambitious with the lighting. So I'll have to explain that when we get there. But first let me run down the rest of the bill of materials for you. We've got four five gallon buckets, each with a bucket lid and six inch net pot, or you can just get those prefabricated AeroPot bucket lid things. A roll of Reflectix insulation, four 32 watt CFLs at 2700 Kelvin, one 19 watt CFL at 5000 Kelvin, five porcelain bulb sockets with 18 inch wire leads, four 17 watt T8 two foot fluorescent tubes at 6500 Kelvin, eight bipin fluorescent tube sockets, one electronic four tube fluorescent ballast, a stellar air pump along with some air tubing and four air stones, a power strip with timer, and some 18 gauge wire, both the solid and stranded variety, a handful of wing nut wire connectors, some mylar, some PVC, a couple eye screws, a length of chain, and a wool blanket or a canvas or a tarp or something like that, a fan, and of course your hydrogen, nutrients, and plants. Grand total for all that, about 150 bucks. Uh, if you want to tack on shipping and extras and make it an even 200, even that, I, I think between four plants, 50 bucks a plant, not that bad. Um, it's pretty tool friendly too. All, all you're gonna need for this is a power drill, a hot glue gun, a PVC pipe cutter, the ratcheting kind works best, and um, I use a lot of duct tape. And inside the frame, what we're gonna do with the lights is we're actually gonna hang the fluorescent tubes vertically in between the plants and dangle the CFL bulbs over the tops of them. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish there is to have the fluorescent tubes at 6500 Kelvin, which is best suited for vegetative growth, uh, right alongside all the greenery of the plant, and then the CFL bulbs at 2700 Kelvin, which is best suited for fruiting and flowering uh, over the tops of the plants, uh, such that all the flowering buds get the optimal light that they need, you know, in theory. And this guy in the middle is a 5000 Kelvin daylight spectrum bulb, just to kind of even things out, I guess, I don't know. And then we'll enclose the sides and rear of the PVC frame in a couple layers of corrugated cardboard. Uh, those will be lined with mylar. And then we'll just drape that canvas cloth over the top of the frame, also mylar lined, to create as best the seals we can with those materials. So first things first, we need to prep the bucket lids. And, and I really dragged my feet on doing this. Um, Dragon H2 came out, and then after that I had midterm, so you know, things happen. And by the time I got around to doing it, I actually didn't have access to this video camera. So most of what I have is just still shots that I'll have to narrate through. So if you, if you opted for the prefabricated aero bucket lids, then you can skip this step. Uh, but if you're just using the regular bucket lids, you just need to cut out a circle in the middle that'll fit your 6 inch net pot or whatever size you're using. And these Home Depot lids are actually pretty great for this because they're so super cheap that a razor blade cuts through them like butter. So there's really no reason to spend extra money on those prefabricated lids. I went ahead and lined my cuts with a strip of duct tape just to kind of give the pot lip some more grip on the, uh, on the bucket lid. Step two, just to wrap a layer of this Reflectix insulation around the bucket and that will hopefully keep the water at a reasonable temperature, and as a bonus, the stuff's like 96% reflective, so maximum use of our light. As far as assembling the frame itself, nothing to say about that really. Um, cut your pieces to size and snap them together. And once assembled, the buckets will fit inside like so. All right, this next part, the lights, is by far the trickiest. It's gonna take you longer than everything else put together. Um, as I mentioned, we're being a little ambitious, a little unconventional, and debatably a little unsafe uh, with our design here. So hopefully it goes without saying, you know, be safe and don't do anything that you are not comfortable doing. Uh, this is the kind of thing that is perfectly simple if you know what you're doing, if you have a background in it, but you can really cause some problems if you don't. So seek help, um, and even if you know you do know what you're doing, still take your time and do it right. 
But enough safety speeches. So what we're going to do is, uh, since we want to hang our lights vertically and, and sands fixture, we're going to have to manually hardwire them into this ballast. This is where your bi-pin sockets will come into play. You're going to need two each per tube, so eight total. And across the bottom of all the sockets, you'll see four little holes, little plugs, um, two each on the left and right-hand sides. And those correspond to the two individual pins protruding from the tube ends. So if you look at the wiring diagram for our ballast, you'll see that uh, for each tube, both pins are going to be wired up to the same wire. So that is to say, none of the tube ends will have two different wires feeding into it. So to accomplish that, we're just going to put a little jumper wire between the left and right pin holes in all of our sockets. And effectively what that's doing is just shorting out the left and the right hand side. And that way, regardless of which side we run our ballast wire to, it'll effectively be wired to both pins. It'd probably be a good idea to run some kind of grounding wire off the ballast. Um, for me, I'm going to consider the ballast sitting on a concrete floor of the basement sufficiently grounded, I think. So once all your tubes are wired, per the ballast diagram, we'll need to run power to the ballast. And to do that, you're going to need to slice open the end of a power cable and strip an inch or so off of the positive and negative wires. Do the same thing to the power wires coming off the ballast, and go ahead and connect those with a wing nut connector. Alrighty, so here's the test run of the manually hardwired tubes. Moving on to wiring up the CFL bulbs. This is also going to require splitting open the end of a power cable and hardwiring that to your CFLs. We're using these base sockets with the 18 inch wire lead so that we can connect them all in parallel and still have some slack to, to be able to dangle them down a little bit and get as close to the tops of the plants as possible. So the first bulb gets connected to power and then the second bulb connected to the first, third to second, etc. Connecting in parallel just means connecting the positives to the positives and the negatives to the negatives all the way down. And that way each bulb will get the same 120 volt AC drop. So now I've drilled holes in the top PVC pipe to run the leads through so that the bulbs can dangle above the plants. Here you go. I kind of rushed through that a little bit, but that does take care of the hardest part of this setup. The last step I haven't actually even done yet, just adding that cardboard enclosure and sticking a fan in there, but uh, those are no-brainers. You can figure that out, I'm sure. So then we just need to fill our buckets with our nutrient solution. My plants had been on a vegetative feed program, and they just started flowering the last couple days, so um, I'll be switching them over to a blooming program. Um, I'm just using the Floronova one-part bloom. I was going to use a three-part solution so I could tweak even more specifically to tomatoes, but uh, I'm lazy, and I had great results with the Floronova grow solution, so I figured I'd stick with that and give their bloom solution a try, and hopefully I'll get some, uh, some good results. I am going to go ahead and, just for kicks and the sake of experimentation, keep one additional, a fifth tomato plant in the original flood and drain beds, uh, just to see, you know, which, which produces better fruit after all. And that is pretty much it. So here are a few more shots of the almost finished product. Uh, plants are a tiny bit droopy right now, I think just from transport stress, but they are otherwise doing great and they have really healthy roots. Um, I'll kick out an update here shortly on how they're doing and with the finishing touches on the enclosure and whatnot. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the setup or any tips for me, I'm still very much experimenting, so feel free to leave a comment and uh, I'll see you next time with an update on these guys. Thanks.